Greetings, everybody. I hope you're all being safe from COVID-19. I know I am. I'm uh, having a romantic quarantine with my wife, Priscilla, in this beautiful house. No reason to leave it. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna start tonight with another story. Uh, it's uh, kind of a dream that goes into reality, so bear with me. Uh, me and Worrell had a house uh, in Ballard, Washington, right? Suburb of Seattle. And we were standing on the porch one night and I could see these UFOs flying in unison over what we had as a neighborhood called Wallington uh, Hill. And the, eight, the UFOs were just in unison going and flying over the top of this hill when one clipped a tree and went down. And I remember me and Worrell just panicking, looking at each other. And uh, we jumped in his Camaro and raced up to the hill. And we found the crash site. And I remember walking towards it thinking, well, this is strange. There's no smoke, no construction beams. It's just a puddle that looks kind of like uh, mercury. And then I heard a voice behind me and I turned around and there was this little alien creature. And without moving his lips, he asked me to take him to his ship. So I picked him up, took him over. He took a sip out of the puddle, which looked like mercury stood up and was healed and he looked in my eyes and without moving his lips he said stare into this puddle and when you see a reflection look through it and you will find your answers to life so i remember uh standing over this puddle of silvery organic matter and i saw my reflection and when I looked through it, it just blew apart into a billion pieces. And right then and there, I had the answers to life. I knew it. And I woke up, yes! It was an epiphany, part of a dream. But from that point on, there was a profound change in me where I could sense other people's emotions. An example is I was walking down the street and an older couple passed me by. And uh, the lady was grabbing onto the, the man. And as I walked by them, I just felt this incredible weight of grief and sorrow. Literally just started sobbing and looked back at them. I could see they were hugging. And something had happened in their lives and that emotion was shared with me. It happened again later in life where I walked by a room where I could feel this sense of grief, heavy weight of emotions and just was confused and went into a conference room. I was at a conference and they started the conference by saying one of the hosts was not able to be there today because she had just passed away unexpectedly from a heart problem. So. I don't know if it was a blessing, you know, at some points I was drinking to keep other people's emotions outside of me, but for some reason they mainly deal with grief. Sometimes I look back at it and wonder if it was a dream or a thread of an alternate reality that weaves in and out of my life. But it was communicating without words, which, you know, we've all experienced through sex, maybe a, you know, a, a free, free form jam with another musician. And it put me on a path of trying to figure out how I communicate with people without using words. Well, years roll by and, you know, here I am today in this amazing grief that I felt. Uh, the, it wasn't just world that passed away. It was a couple months after that, my beloved baby sister, Kamala, passed away. And uh, this first part of uh, Season of Decay pretty much just deals with that, that kind of overwhelming grief, darkness. And 
it got to a, a, a point where I felt like I could communicate with painting. So the first chapter of this, Season of Decay, Part 1, uh, the, it's little, not quite as mature as where I ended up going with these paintings. So the first ones I released are when I first started. I uh, more recently taught myself a technique of scratching the canvas and then painting into it and then scratching it again and painting lightly over it, creating kind of a 3D image. There's a character uh, that's coming in the second part of this, Season of Decay Part 2, which I'm working on now, called The Formless Man. And I was able to capture him in this kind of weird 3D image. I'm going to put that up on, uh, up on my site, put it in the gallery so it'll be for sale. And like I said, it's a character that comes uh, later in part two. Part one deals mainly with just this overwhelming grief. Part two deals more with the, the uh, you know, the creativity, the reality, the awareness part of it that I knew I had something had changed in my life. Uh, so last time we talked, uh, I asked people to send in questions, and I got a few. Thank you very much. So I'll just start by answering those now. Um, somebody asked and wanted to uh, know about the song All the Cowards Hide, which was left off Dreaming Neon Black. How come such a killer song was left off the album? <laughs> One of my favorite songs. Honestly, I don't remember uh, whether we just didn't feel it was good enough or ready. It was eventually released on, uh, I think it was Believe in Nothing with bonus tracks. A uh, second question here is, what's your favorite song off the first two Sanctuary records? Well, without a doubt, Epitaph. You know, I feel really strongly connected to that song now because I kind of witnessed world channeling uh, music from a alternate source, let's say. And there was another question here. It's, uh, how do you feel about Sanctuary continuing without Worrell, releasing new music without him? Personally, I don't know how I feel about continuing to do shows, but I am very against them releasing new music without him. I just wanted your take on that. Well, you know, my take uh, is I know Worrell would be happy. I think if it's creative and they're keeping Sanctuary alive, that's great. I'm really happy for the guys in Sanctuary. And uh, personally, it's not Sanctuary without Worrell in it for me. But uh, I definitely support them 100%. And another question, the last here, on this segment, uh, my favorite painting. Well, here, I'll show you. It's this one right here. And it goes with the song, A Truth is Lost. And it's about a father witnessing his son's suicide. And I see it as kind of the father looking at his own reflection and seeing him, his son in the mirror. Uh, the song's pretty deep. It could mean something to other people. I would just take it for whatever it means to you. And I would also like to say the new songs and paintings are available for purchase. If you buy the CD as a gift surprise, I will put a painting that's not in the sales catalog with it. You can also buy paintings and paintings with my music. I autograph the paintings and deliver them to your home. Well, have them delivered to your home. You won't see me personally. Uh, so there are several options, you know. I encourage you to uh, support the arts. And if uh, that means go to www 
dot james dhb shepherd dot com i'll keep this going as long as i can so back to the uh painting yes i'm gonna release uh one more painting to the gallery tonight that's the formless man i'm right in the process now of putting uh part two of season of decay together and should have it uh ready by the end of uh august also, I would like to say that these songs are still under construction. Uh, it's just like a never-ending process for me. And for young, inspiring musicians, guitar players, you know, I'm open. Violinists, I love cello. Uh, the song, A Truth of Lo is Lost, is uh, a complex solo rhythm section that I wrote for it. Uh, it's kind of like something I would write for Nevermore. And if you would like to submit a solo for it, uh, you can go to my website and do that. I would love to hear and uh, share the music. So go check that out. If it's something you might be interested in, uh, send me a clip of you playing a, over the solo section, which is pretty obvious. Anyway, uh, like I said, stay safe. COVID-19's a bitch. I mean, I'm not leaving my house without a rubber suit. Thanks for uh, tuning in, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Right. Peace out. Sorry, I'm saying goodbye now. Yeah.